episode. We are going to be doing episode 12 right now, and that is we're going to be using perpendicular paths. Uh, you might see me looking to my left fairly often. That is because I got a brand new second monitor. Oof. Ah, oh, it's so good. So good. So I'm pretty, I'm pretty excited about that. But when we left off, <clears throat> we had this test set up. And the goal is to get our path to go up and around, under, and on the back side of this. So we can't allow the path to go under and squeeze through this crack here. That's not allowed. Um, if I hit play, I'll have to go back to the scene view here. You'll also notice that these two are connected by default. So that's another thing that we want to avoid. We do not want the Whitling to walk down this face. Excuse me, because as you can see, he should walk up this face. And I was a little bit concerned where we left off because it's just not doing it. It's, it's just stopping here. And I looked at the code and I sort of slapped my head. I was like, oh man, of course it's not doing anything. Let me show you why. I'll exit play mode. So here's our path node. Look at what we did. <laughs> we commented out if there were two path nodes connected. Of course it's not going to do anything. So, actually, I feel like... Um, well, I know I want to comment these in. I know I want a path A and B. And then I know I want this end curly bracket. That's correct. So what we want to do is essentially the same thing that we did here. We're going to use point extensions to see which of the two faces are perpendicular to each other. And actually, <clears throat> I'm really tempted. Well, here we're doing others path node links. And then in here, we're going to be doing this is path node links, right? So let's hop down to our, and you know what? I'm totally going to delete this. We don't need this anymore. This has been dead code for a couple days now. So let's make a private void and we'll call this connect perpendicular paths. And we'll just have pass it to path nodes A and B. That means we should be able to hop up here. And we'll just cut this. I don't think we're going to need this print anymore. And oh boy, a... B. Got to be really careful with cut and paste. Um, so it needs an other here. So that says to me that we're also going to need a cube face to deal with. Oh. Um, actually, let's go back. We don't want a cube face. Um, I think we want a path node, right? <clears throat> Path node target. Oh, target's not a great name. Um, it is the node in question. It is the node that we are connecting. Maybe we could call this 
test node. Point A, point B. <clears throat> Link A, test node. Another extended point B, test node. And maybe instead of a log error, let's do a log warning. Um, one will say connect perpendicular paths was called and failed to find a connection. I guess we don't need an exclamation point. I think the yellow warning box is enough. So let's call this function, shall we? Let's go back to the place where we cut from. <clears throat> and let's see. We're connecting perpendicular paths from node A, node B, and other. And down here, if we have two possible path node links for a single one, then we're going to connect perpendicular paths, good grief, path A, path B, and this. And let's see how it, see how the cookie crumbles. Oh. My god. Oh man. It's working. <sighs> man. That feels so good. When you type code and you want it to do something and it does that thing that you want it to do. I would say it takes maybe at least five years of practice to start feeling that. And even still, I've been doing this for eight years or something like that, and it's pretty rare. But we did have all the pieces of the puzzle. We'd already solved the tricky bits. We just had to apply it to our two node solution. And then, you know, extract some functions, make sure we can reuse the code that we already wrote. So I guess, no, no, it is a big, it is a big, big win. So I'm going to delete these two cubes. Let's turn these ones back on. And let's make a nice big test area. I haven't done any crazy Y stuff yet. How's this look here? I can go higher. Oops. The one problem with this is it's going to be really hard to start to get um, <clears throat> to actually get paths that would be interesting. Oh, that's what we could do for the rest of this episode. We can add an a extra bit of rotation to the faces of the cubes as they're spawned randomly. Okay, good, it is randomized. Um, I did copy this one, right? Okay. And then let's have a weird one where we are on, still on X3, Y1, Z1. Oh, let's move our base cube. Unity, I have a question. Why does Alt-Tab highlight rotation? What's going on there? What? Can I type 15 here and it would apply to all? No. 
just a question. Just, you know, something to think about on your off day if you work at Unity. So let's see. Do we have any straight faces? No, I don't think we do here. Can we possibly work our way up the side? What connections do we have? See, we're already getting into the puzzly aspects. I like that. Well, let's test this. No! <laughs> that's fine, that's fine. That's what this is about. Testing, testing, testing. I wonder if it did work and it's just not showing. Nope, it did not. But now we have a little bit of a bigger area to play with. So this path node doesn't actually think it has a linked path node on same cube, which I find fascinating. Neither do you. Our L path face has the rigid body, so they should be. Oh, I should have looked at what face that was. I am still using the same seed, right? I believe I am. It was cube 05. Huh. Well, let's go back to our bad seeds file, make sure we document that. Um, cube on left is not recognizing linked path on same cube. What if I turn off all the cubes except for 05? I can't imagine that would be a problem, but... Ugh, play mode. <laughs> it should still be this... Oh. Ooh, that's not the same. Let's see, and this is an L to straight that is breaking. Let's turn on the cubes again. Let's just turn on these five and check some other L to straights. Okay, so here's a double L to straight. Huh. Ha 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 ha. Nice, yeah. <clears throat> Find a problem, whittle it down, break its spirit. Oh, or it breaks my spirit. Hmm. So this one worked fine. The real trick is being able to replicate the problem in the smallest problem space available. Well, that is just strange. Um, hmm.
So this is the forward face, and this forward face is actually hidden. So if I disable O2 and the forward face is open, then it works just fine. What does Cube's left face look like? Oh, no path. Okay, that's fine. So let's take a journey. <clears throat> let's pretend that we are a cube face spawner. And we add all of our faces. Set to parent, right position. We get the faces. Now this calculate hidden faces. I don't know how much I like that there. So this set active false, I think this is what's doing it for us. So I think what I'd like to do do I have a public function that's like go do all of the checking on faces? Let's extract this into a public function to validate all path nodes. Hide in faces validate. I'm a little bit worried because, oh, you know what I could do? I could move this over here and then check the timer without having to have my mug show up on here. Nice. Um. Oh, that was a mistake. Public void validate face uh, validate all face path nodes. So where did I pull this from? I pulled it from handle rotate complete, validate. And then in our cube face spawner, I think, oh, maybe we're gonna need to separate validate path nodes into two different things. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. <clears throat> so first we get all of the faces, and then we find all of the nodes that connect on the same cube. Then we calculate all the hidden faces, we hide them, and then we validate. So I'm gonna need a core dot. Um, find connecting path nodes on cube. I'm going to copy this so I don't have to type it out again. This must be a public function. You know what, let's use an interesting and a slightly different technique.
because <clears throat> mm. well I know I'm gonna be looping through every face so this is a given and each face has two or three nodes So I need to check the outer nodes on one face and see if they overlap any of the other nodes Okay Okay, this should be fine Um <clears throat> I think this is going to need to be a nested for loop. Test face index equals face index plus one. So we start with the current face. And then I'm going to take the current face and get its two outer nodes, two outer path nodes. We can do that here. Path node, um, current path A, get path node zero get path node ugh, I don't like this one current face okay I'm going to First of all, who calls you? Whoa, did we delete that code? Hmm. That's fine, that's fine. Um, get path node count. Shift F12. Who's using you? That's also our debug draw path. <clears throat> so I'm just going to write two ac or two accessors. Yes, get first path node and get last path node. So we'll return A. What don't you like about that? Oh! <laughs> At PNL dot count minus one. There we go. And we'll get the last path node, current path B. There we go. So the first time into this loop, we are taking, let's for instance, say the top face, because that is the first technically in our array. Getting the two outer nodes. And then what we need to do is in an inner loop, We'll start on the right face, because remember we did top, right, bottom, left, forward, back. So now test face index is less than cube faces.length. 
test face index TFI, cool. And we're basically going to get the test face and get two path nodes from that as well. Oh, hey -o. Maybe to the drawing board. <clears throat> I think we're going to need to have four checks in here, but I want to draw just to be certain. So we've got this face here and this face here. We've got it here, here. Oh, that's funny because my, now my. My actual pixel real estate has essentially doubled. That means that my tiny little pad, like those were two lines of equal distance. <laughs> Definitely going to have to change those settings after this. Um, so we'll call this a B C D. <clears throat> and we want to test A to C, A to D, B to C, B to D. And if any of those overlap, then we can exit early. Right? Because there's only one location in which two faces can meet. If we find B and C, that means B and D obviously can't touch, neither can A and C, and we're done. Okay, see, drawing stuff out <clears throat> definitely helps with your logic. I think we're going to need a private function to do this. Well, I think it would be wise. Uh, private bool nodes overlap. Oh, you know what? We could put this in the node. Yeah, let's do that. We'll make a public function in here. See if it overlaps other. And what's awesome is we can just return a single calculation. And we're going to get a component for Sphere Collider. And we're going to get the bounds of that component. And then we can contains intersects. That's what we want. Boom. There we go. The reason I feel comfortable putting this get component in here, you know what, I lied, I don't feel comfortable. <laughs> let's, um, let's just do it in a wake, you know? Lighter equals get component sphere collider or even better because i only really care about this bounds type yeah let's just store the bounds in here the bounds is something that unity gives us which um is so nice because it means we don't have to write our own like 3d collision math library which, while fun and educational and good practice, is a pretty serious 
investment of time. Especially if you're trying to optimize that stuff, you know? Mm, okay, so we got the bounds. Let's give anyone access... Oh, wait, we're in this class. Yeah, I think we can just say... Return... Bounds dot intersects other dot bounds. Ooh, ooh, I like that. Oh, here comes a special guest, as always. Very distracting. but cute, so it's okay. Where were we? So now we can see if our path nodes overlap. We were actually in the cube core, weren't we? No, we were in the face. No, we were in the core, that's what I thought. Um, this is a public member function. There we go. Find connecting path nodes on cube. So if current path A overlaps test path A. And I know we want to break out of this loop, but <clears throat> we also want to set their linked paths on same cube to be pointing at each other. And that seems like a good, another function that we can put into the path node. Link nodes. on same cube. Oh, this should return void. Classic mistake. Sometimes my eyes just read upwards like 10 lines and I'll copy what's there as the return type without thinking. Rookie mistake. Other linked path node on same cube equals this. Linked path node on same cube equals other. So what's cool is we can actually remove our on trigger enter check here. I think. Ooh, let's just comment it out. Ooh. Link node on same cube, test path A. And then we've got testing A against test path B. CPA, nice. LNOS, nice. TPB, break. Next, we're checking current path B with test path A. And that means current path B, we want to link node on same cube, test path A. PB, almost there, ON. <laughs> test path B, and then we know that current path B test path B. Let's go over this and make sure we didn't do anything silly. <clears throat> I was 
Not really excited about copying and pasting here. So current to test A, current A test A, current A test B. Uh, you know, I feel like I could just put this in a function and clean this up a lot. Hmm. <laughs> well, let's give it a shot. First, we need to make sure we called this function. Classic mistake. I think I did. In cube face spawner, find connecting path nodes on cube. Yep, 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 yep. I did comment out this where we set it up. Oh, we need one more condition here. Or. Overlapped equals linked path node on same queue. Whoa. Okay, we already busted. So we broke in get first path node. Oh, we want to make sure that the face is not empty. Definitely an important check. Get path node count. So here we can continue, and we'll do the same thing here, test face, get path node count, continue. Oh, hey -o. E sharp doesn't allow. No, oh, not the frogs, Thunderbutt, not the frogs. <sighs> Okay. Hmm. Errors disappeared. <sighs> That's not good. We did fix this one though, which is kind of nice. Search and failed. There is a severe imbalance in the cube's path nodes. Let's figure out where we got that. How did we get that? <laughs> huh. That should go down and around. Good. Mm, I don't like errors that I can't replicate. Huh. Things, oh no. Hmm. 
Interesting. This doesn't have a linked path node on same cube. Ooh, nice. Well, we found it. Whoa. Validate linked path, cube face. Okay. Let's debug. What's happening here? Argument out of range. You can go outside in a little bit, Thunderbutt. Not meow. <clears throat> this is kind of tricky to test um, because we have... Well, let's take a look at what's going on in the inspector. That should maybe give us a hint. Is it you? Forward, straight, fast, face. Linked path node connected. You're connected to the begin end. Begin end is connected to you. This is right. The linked path node should be the linked path node on the same face. Oh, let's just put a breakpoint where the assertion failed, right? We can attach it. <clears throat> so let's clear this out. Moving to the right, nothing. Let's drop the breakpoint. Move to the left. What? What? <laughs> Oh no! Oh no! Possible path node links is one. But the other is at zero. Maybe we should just say equals two Ooh, that is that is straight shooting from the hip coding right there
<laughs> okay. Done. So this is the down path connecting to the back path. Down. Connected to the forward. Oh, yeah, this totally should be connected. So this actually is a possible path node links. And this linked path node never got set. Which is crazy because we haven't actually mm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Okay. <clears throat> Perhaps Um, let's move this assert down in here, and let's assert that there's only one other. Single node is incorrectly assigning its path. Sure. Uh, but the thing I was thinking of was how I set up my for loop. If you remember, I set up the for loop like this. I have, we have an array uh, with my giant width here. So we'll say this is top, right, bottom, left, Front, oh, I guess this should be down and back. So here I'm checking top to right, top to down, top to left, top to front, top to back. Makes sense. But the way I set it up, next time through, when our current one is right, I'm just checking right to down, right to left, right to forward, right to back. Maybe that's correct. Let's try changing it and see if we get a different result. I don't think it will make a result, or I don't think it'll make a change. Our error might be somewhere else. So instead of doing this here, we'll set this at zero. And I'll say if test face index equals face index, let's continue. And I do believe that was front and back. No, down and back. Hey! 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 Down and back. Oh! Nice. Okay, I do believe we're ready to start doing bigger tests again. Oh, this was a terrible choice. I should have used shift-click. Let's randomize our seed. It's time.
Yes. Yes. Um. No. <laughs> uh, what is the problem here? You going down? No, you got nowhere else to go. Why does it think it's overlapping two path nodes? Oh, this one down here. Connect perpendicular paths was called and failed to find a connection. Okay. You are at one zero one. You are at one zero or one one two. Well, before we go any further, let's make a note. Document the seed. Welcome back, Thunderbutt. Welcome back. See, I knew you were interested in this too. This is an interesting problem. So why would this fail? Let's debug! And let's do this here, bionk. So before we go, let's double check our cube positions. We've got 112, which is going to be other. And then we've got 101, which is going to be this. Well, let's see what the other extended point is. One, one, one. That's correct, because this one up here was at one, one, two on the Z. This face is shooting out this way, so this is others perpendicularity. Whoa! Oh wait, one 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 should also be one 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 is the target point. We're shooting out from this one here, right? That makes sense. So this guy has two possible nodes. Thank you, Thunderbutt. One one one. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. Link nodes. No.
What? <laughs> what? 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 Oh, we need to we need to be testing that seed again. But it's coming together. We got some pretty cool looking stuff. A few bugs to iron out. So I think part of the problem might be that this one we never moved it. Yeah. <clears throat> and then as soon as we move it, it's fine. But we are moving this one. Ooh, moving this one gave us the error. Only the first time. Oh, oh, no. Okay, okay, testing, testing, testing. Starting to run low on time. Oh, oh. <laughs> it's already happened here. It's happened before. For our before we even rotated a single thing. Okay. So if we have a three way connection, like dump, dump, and then this way. then it fails to find a connection. You know what, maybe we could use that half space test again to try and throw out one of these points if there's two, two things in there. I feel like that's muddying the waters a bit. Um, well, let's just put a breakpoint back in here. And let's look at the call stack to try and figure out who called what. Young. So we got cube face start. Oh. You know, it's interesting. We actually don't want to do any of this. We don't want to do any of this until all of the cubes are spawned. I think that's what's going on here. That's quite interesting. Can I do this in a wake? I don't think I can do this in a wake because of this. Hmm.
Let's do a quick test. We can delete this later if we want. Cube manager. Always set it at the origin. Do, 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 do. So in cube manager start, we're just going to get all of the cube face spawners. Yes. Find objects of type. <laughs> Foot. Cool. I like that. Cube face spawner. Oh, this should be objects. Boom. And we'll loop through all of these. And then we'll say spawners at spawn index <laughs> dot spawn. <laughs> Uh, I love lines of code like that. Cube face spawner. Let's make a public. And let's just pull all of this in here. So this would spawn all of the faces. Okay, I think I see. Um, let's pull this into another function as well. Public void setup cubes. So I think what I want to do is I want to find all the faces, make sure all the nodes are connected on each cube, hide the right faces, but I want to do that for all of the cubes before I decide to go through one more time and validate all of the path nodes. Set up. So here we spawn them all, we set them up, and then after we set them up, then we validate the path nodes. Dang it. Well, we don't know that it's really broken yet. <laughs> oh, yeah. No. 
Oh, from victory to defeat. Victory to defeat. Well, I think this might be it for today. This has two path nodes, but nothing is linked. Thunderbutt. Hey now. Okay, yeah, we still got a few bugs in here. So I think that's what we'll do next time. Once we solve this bug, we're going to start spinning our faces. You can see that all of these default faces are just vertical. I don't want that to happen. So that is it for me. My name is Billy Lemon Zest. This has been episode number 12 of the Whitlings Prototype. And I'll see you next time.